everyone. Uh, my name is Amanda Farrell. I'm the Senior Director of Donor Recruitment here at Connect Life, and I will ask any of my teammates who are on the call to introduce themselves as well. Jamie, can we start with you? Yeah, hi. Uh, my name is Jamie, and I'm a Partner Relations Associate with Connect Life. Hi, I'm Rebecca. Same, same, same title as Jamie, Partner Relations Associate. Heather? Heather, do you want to introduce yourself to the team? I don't think she has volume. So we also have Heather Harper on the call. Uh, myself and any of the folks uh, here from Connect Life are here to work with you and help you throughout the school year. Um, so with that, I will get started with our uh, presentation here today. And Rebecca, can you just confirm that you can see the slides for me? I can. OK, wonderful. So today we are so excited to kick off our official webinar series. Um, each time that we have a webinar, it will be focused on a different service line or a different area of Connect Life. And we have really been working hard with all of our community partners to make this content exciting for you all, um, interactive, um, and topics that really dive even more into our mission of connecting communities, inspiring donation, and saving lives. So today I'm just going to spend a brief few minutes uh, reviewing some deadlines. Um, highlighting again for those students who are on the call, some of the new upgrades we've made to our website to give you access to more information. I just want to touch on some awareness ideas. Uh, my colleagues here will talk about blood drive boot camps, um, and then we're really going to dive into the journey of the unit of blood. So our hope is to take you behind the scenes so that you can learn more about what happens here um, and how it really happens that we say one donor can save up to three lives. So some of you may seen this, have seen this already, but we received a grant um, in partnership with Johnson & Johnson to develop a video um, to inspire donation amongst young people so we'll be starting with that and then we've worked um, within our blood lab to be able to show you through video what happens from the time the coolers come back to our facility until units of blood go on hospital shelves to save lives we will save time for q a and again i really want to make this interactive so please once we get to that time uh, type into the chat uh, or unmute yourself and ask questions. And then I will give you an insight um, as to the content of our next webinar, which is very special. We actually have um, some uh, national um, authors and a book that has been published nationwide um, regarding uh, the story of donation. So really quick, just some important dates for you all. Um, all those that are having blood drives, your advisors would have received um, a gift, an electronic gift card that you can use for various club activities or for um, incentives and giveaways to encourage blood donation. Um, our next webinar will be December 9th, and I will set that invite out. And by December 17th, we just want to make sure that you all have blood drives scheduled for the rest of this year. Also, between now and then, if you would like to reach out to your um, Connect Life representative, you can start to look at um, if you fall into the category that qualifies for tours in the spring. Again, we're going to be spicing those up, doing them a little bit differently. They will be held, um, I believe, anytime after March so that we can hopefully get outside of the um, bad weather. But again, if for some reason your school is not able to come here for a tour, you know, we really want to brainstorm ideas with you. We do have some volunteers, uh, donor families, recipient speakers who can come into your school as well. So to start off with, I want to show you some of the upgrades on the website. You know, you as student leaders are really going to be uh, taking the reins in raising awareness within your school community. Remember that may not just be within your school, but with the entire school community on organ, eye tissue and blood donation. So you'll see here our main web page um, on here. You will be able to um, access any of the webinars from last year, as well as we have some great additional videos on here. So that's from our Connect Life Club page. 
you'll be able to have access to educational resources. So a lot of times as you're promoting organ, eye tissue and blood donation in your school, you wanna be able to have some facts or stats behind it as far as the need. So all of these um, are great references as far as statistics on those waiting for an organ received those needing blood. So I encourage you to look through here as well. Um, the other great part of our website that you will see is we have a blog. Um, every month you'll find stories of people who are tied into our mission in organ, eye tissue, or blood donation. Uh, you also may not know we have a podcast. Um, again, we've had various great speakers on there, uh, mental health professionals that talk about the um, emotional impact of transplantation donation. We've had blood recipients on there. You also will see a link to videos. This will take you to our YouTube page. We have a variety of our, not only our widespread media, but even some things that students have done before. As well, you'll see any news articles where we've been. So again, within Outreach and Connect Life Club and events and resources, you'll be able to find a lot of different content that you can share, that you can highlight on your social media or send through different distribution channels in your school to be able to raise awareness. Um, the other aspect that I do want to show you is we have a new sponsor resources page. So these are folks who are hosting blood drives. It's essentially anything and everything you would need to promote your blood drives. We have all of your recruitment tips. We have our video resources, our, our um, commercials, I'm sorry, as well as any of our social media content. And again, I'm just going through this quickly now, but your um, Connect Life representative will help to take a look at this. But again, our goal is to arm you with everything you need so that you can run your own awareness initiatives and blood drives in your schools. So just some ideas here. And again, feel free to type into the chat with us. You know, between now and um, the end of this calendar year, December, there's a lot of things that you can do within your clubs to raise awareness. Um, I said we have a podcast, but check within your school. Maybe you have the opportunity to do a podcast. Um, I'm going to shout out our friends at East Aurora. They have a great um, almost morning show, video show, where they have used that as an opportunity to interview, whether it's folks on our team or other people within the school. Um, have you ever thought about doing a Cahoots or a Quizlet? We actually do that internally here. It's a fun way that you can send um, some quiz information to see what people know about donation. Um, again, as I said, we have guest speakers, but I encourage you to really utilize all of those channels and share them with us. We um, have dramatically increased our following on social media, so be sure to tag us. We want any photos, any videos, um, anything that you have done to share with us so that we can promote things that you guys have going on in your schools. Does anyone else have other ideas of initiatives or activities, things that you've implemented at your schools so far? Go ahead and write them into the chat. Um, here I do want to talk about our blood drive boot camps because that's another important thing. Um, Jamie, do you mind if I, I call on you and just touch on, I know you've had some successful blood drive boot camps. This is really the opportunity that we prepare you to be leaders within your school um, and run very successful life-saving blood drives. Yeah, I mean, I <clears throat> there's there's, in my opinion, there's no better way to really kind of get the point across to the students in the, the whole school um, other than doing one of one of these boot camps. Um, you, you mentioned East Aurora, Amanda. East Aurora just did a phenomenal uh, blood drive boot camp with me um, a few days ago and they they interviewed me on camera. Um, I kind of gave some stats and, you know, little tips and tricks on how to prepare for a blood drive. And, um, you know, almost every single high school that we run with, we we try to do these. And it, it I believe it, it helps immensely. Um, it not only lets us explain to the students and even staff, um, you know, anything that they might have to know about preparation for blood drives and things like that, but also, um, you know, puts to bed any 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 myths that they may have heard. Um, you know, if they're nervous about donation, anything like that, we can really kind of help um, facilitate that live and in, in, in person right then and there. So I, I highly recommend every school do, does a boot camp. 
Rebecca, anything else you want to add to that? Yeah, Jamie, Jamie hit the nail on the head, but um, using, I'll use Barker as an example, because that's my mo most recent one as well. Um, we have two new great advisors at Barker who needed, you know, me to come in, um, even though they have diligently done all of their homework. Um, it always helps for one of us to come in and talk to the students, get the students excited, um, talk exactly about like people, kids who are nervous, give the, the students an opportunity to ask lots of questions. And they always do. They come up with questions, a new one almost every single time. So, um, and if we don't know the answers all the time, we always get back to them. We'll, you know, go ask someone, one of our supervisors or something like that and get, get the questions right back to them. It might be about travel or medicine. Um, and then the great thing is, is it just helps everyone to be prepared for the blood drive because we don't want students or teachers to come to a blood drive unprepared and then be disappointed and be turned away. So for instance, having low iron there, we offer these great tip sheets on how to boost your iron leading up to the drive. And believe me, it does help. Um, you know, we tell the kids to hydrate because, you know, or eat before lots of people think that if you, if you, I'm sorry, there's an echo. Um, lots of people think that, you know, if you're going, if you, that you don't need to eat before a blood drive or before you donate blood. Um, so we, you know, squash that and say, oh no, it's very important to eat. Um, you're not doing a blood um, test, you're doing a blood, you were taking a whole pint of blood. Um, and then the another important, really important thing is um, making sure that everyone has an ID and that, that if you don't have an actual uh, ID, then there's other ways we can do that. So there's there's uh, the yearbook, There you, you, we can use a bus pass with your name and um, picture on it, just to let everyone know that there are if you're not, if you don't have a driver's license or a permit, there are other ways to um, to get ID. Um, a lot of the times, the schools can print out something at the front office too. Um, so all these things, sometimes people don't know. So that that's why that's that's why we are there to help. It's a very good uh, twenty to thirty minutes that we can spend with you. Awesome, thank you. So this is that was all of our you know kind of business to kind of arm you let you know of the tools that are out there and how we can help and now we get to get into the fun stuff. So I am very excited um, to be able to show you this video again. You all are really getting a sneak peek. So this is a video that was developed from a grant from Johnson and Johnson and ADRP, which is a board I sit on of international blood centers. Um, Johnson and Johnson feels very strongly that we continue to inspire a young generation of blood donors. Um, you know, I'm sure as many of you um, are aware, you know, at 16 is the first time you can donate blood. So being able to educate um, not only you all here on the call, but the rest of your school on the importance of blood donation and why it's needed will help to make sure that we have a stable blood supply for 10, 20, 30 years to come. So this is a, a brief video. And again, we have access to this on our website for you all. So feel free to show it within your school and channels. Um, so here is our video. Who are you? What are you doing? People could die. There's not enough blood. What? You need to come with me. There's only one way to prevent what's coming. Or what's already here. What are you talking about? I'm from the future. In 20 years from now, there's not going to be enough blood for the people who need it. So everyone who can needs to donate blood right now. Yeah, I'll get right on that. No, now. <laughs> Whoa, what is that? Oh, this is my time machine teleporter thing. Awesome. Where are we? Oh, we are in a blood donation center. Cool. You know what's not cool? What? 4.5 million Americans need blood transfusions every year. Wow. That's like a lot of Instagram followers. Insensitive, but okay. The point is, one in seven people that enter hospital need blood, and that's a lot. Well, my mom and her friends donate, so they got me covered. Well, that's kind of my point. 60% of all blood donors are over the age of 40. So there's going to be like a massive shortage of blood just around. And you don't want to see a future where there's not enough blood. Well, I'm just one person. What difference can I make? Well, you can make a huge difference. Every pint of blood that you donate can save up to three lives. How? Well, they take the blood and they separate it into three different components. Those components are plasma, platelets, and red blood cells. For example, they can be used for cancer patients, burn victims, premature babies, and many other patients. 
And if you donate blood every 56 days for every year that you're eligible, you can save up to 1,212 lives. Oh, that's pretty cool. But who are these people? Oh, your neighbors, your friends, people all around you. Let me show you. My name is Johnny Volpe. I'm 18 years old, and I'm a cancer survivor. Uh, during my battle with cancer, I've had spinal and cranial radiation and intense chemotherapy. During those treatments, my body was just weak all the time. I wasn't really able to do anything. So my doctor get blood transfusions, which have helped my battle tremendously, and without it, I wouldn't have been able to fight the fight as well as I did. My body is healthy, and it's all because of the blood donors. Hi, my name is Brian Rubin, and when I was nine years old, I was diagnosed with leukemia. During that time, from, it was a three-year treatment process. There's so much that you have to worry about with all the treatments and things of that nature that having the blood readily available for donors, transfusions, and things of that nature just is an incredible relief for the families going through what they do. So thank you for donating. I'm Therese Brooks, and I have sickle cell anemia. I'm 63 years old, and that's a large feat to be 63 with sickle cell anemia. Any time that I have to have surgery, I have to have a blood transfusion. And that's why it's very, very important for you to please give, because it's very, very needed. I'm very grateful being Therese's husband, because as Therese stated, she is 63 years of age. And when it was determined that she had sickle cell anemia, her life expectancy was 23, but because of blood transfusions and because of the medical attention, thankfully, she has been able to make it this long with, um, with sickle cell anemia disease. Our son Maverick was born at 25 weeks gestation. He's our only surviving triplet. He had a brother and a sister that passed away shortly after birth. He had multiple surgeries, procedures, and of course with that, Maverick had a total of eight blood transfusions. And if it weren't for blood donors like yourselves, um, we wouldn't have our son. So he just turned two in September. He's happy, healthy. Okay. I think I'm ready. Let me see that. It only works with my microchip. Gosh, that transportation thing is dizzying. Oh, yeah, that happens sometimes. Good thing I packed water and a sandwich. Oh, sweet. You do know how important it is to eat before you donate blood, right? Yes. That's a good sandwich. You guys make great sandwiches in the future. I didn't make that. I got it down the street at the deli. That's my favorite deli. They give me free pickles. <laughs> Anyways, I do have to ask you a few questions before we go to the blood drive. <clears throat> Are you at least 17 years old or 16 in some states? I'm 18 in every state. Perfect. Are you at least 110 pounds and feeling well and healthy? Yes, ma'am. Wonderful. Let's go. They'll get you checked in and ask you some questions. Make sure you've got your ID handy. Then they'll check your pulse, blood pressure, and iron level to make sure you're all set. After that, you're ready to give blood. Once you're done, you'll get a snack to get your blood sugar back to a healthy level. It's all super simple. That wasn't that bad, and it didn't take that long. And I got a free cookie. Oh, I should have gotten one of those. Ten years from now, the bees die, and we lose all our chocolate supply. And the fake stuff just isn't as good. Oh, no. I'll bother you about that some other time. Anyways, thank you for donating. A lot of young people are able to, but they don't. You're really making a difference. I have to. People are counting on me and my friends. We need donors from all different backgrounds and blood types. So, what happens now? Do you, like, go back to the future? I wish you wouldn't say it like that, but yeah. Could we go eight weeks into the future so I could donate blood again? We can't spoil all the fun. Gotta give you something to look forward to. See ya! Wait. How am I getting home? If your school has the blood drive, get involved and donate. 
If not, try to start one at your school. Or, if those options don't work, contact your local blood center representative and learn how to get started. All right. So I think that that is a fun way to introduce um, the the idea and the need for blood donation. It kind of reminds me of some of those cheesy Disney shows my kids watch, but uh, funny nonetheless. So that's everything that comes up to the need, the actual blood donation, and then you saw all of those units of blood and they go into the cooler and what happens then? Um, so I am really pleased to be able to show you um, this behind the scenes in our blood lab as this uh, webinar is focused on the journey of the unit of blood from you as a donor to saying yes and rolling up your sleeve into the arms of the patient at the hospital. Uh, so right now we will launch into our uh, behind the scenes tour uh, and find out what it takes to create those life-saving products for our hospitals. Hi, my name is Zach. I'm a blood component coordinator up here at the Connect Life Blood Lab. And I'm going to take you through our process of taking your whole blood donations and turning them into our products that we send to our Western New York hospitals. So we get our coolers like this from our blood drives. And in them, we have our whole blood unit. So uh, we take these and we can fit uh, up to 12 in the cooler at a time. We're gonna take these over to our computer, log them into the computer, and then take them and centrifuge them down. All right, so here at the computers, we want to keep track of the units we get in uh, because this is technically a biohazardous substance and a pharmaceutical substance as well. So we have to keep good track of what we are taking in and out. And then we're ready to take these over and get them into our centrifuges. Alrighty. Here at the table is where we decide what products we're going to make from our plasma for our blood. Uh, all of our blood is filtered down into what we call leukoreduced red blood cells. What that means is after we separate the plasma out, it is going to be put through a filter that looks like this. And that filter will take out any white blood cells that are still with the red blood cells because we don't want those going into patients because they could react uh, with the patient's blood. Uh, that is our uh, triage. I'm going to take these units and fold them so that they can fit into our centrifuge. We have to fold it a certain way to keep all of the lines and bags lined up so that when we spin it down, uh, we don't have a blood bag explode on us <laughs> and cause a mess. So once we have everything folded up, nice and neat, they go into our purple centrifuge cups. And this is ready to go into our centrifuge and be spun down to separate our red blood cells from our plasma. Here we have our centrifuge. Our two units are balanced against each other so that they are equal weight so one isn't wobbling like a washer that's out of balance. Uh, this centrifuge is uh, refrigerated. It keeps the units at four degrees Celsius, which is where we keep all of our blood at when we have it here. So this will be spun down for seven minutes um, at 4,500 rotations per minute. And after that, the red blood cells will, because they're denser, be sitting at the bottom of the bag, all of our plasma at the top, and in the middle will be a layer of white blood cells, platelets, uh, and anything not quite as dense as red cells or as light as plasma. Now the center for you just spun the blood down, can pop it open. We now have our spun down unit. I'm gonna carefully take this out of the cup. We don't want to disturb 
the separation. What we can see now, we have our top layer of plasma, a white layer in the middle of all of those white blood cells, the platelets, all that. And then below that, the dark area is our packed red blood cells. So these will come over. And go into our expressor. So we'll get our other unit. So, these units are now ready to be expressed. Also, close our centrifuges. So, once in here, uh, these are going to push out once we crack the cannulas on top, push the plasma into our plasma bags, and uh, we'll stop it before the red cells get up to there. Use our clips. And the bags up here are gonna be our adsol bags. We're gonna add that after we get the plasma out. It acts as a preservative um, and pretty much doubles the uh, shelf life of our blood from 21 days without it to 42 with it. Now that both of our bags have been cracked, we have plasma flowing into our plasma bags. So now we can see our two products, our red blood cells with uh, adenine saline solution added, the adsol, and our plasmas. So once all of this adsol is drained from the top bag, we bring it over and we're going to seal off our bags. To separate our red cell along with our filter and our plasma bag. So this one, which is marked A5165, our code for pre-cryo, will stay with its empty adsol bag and will be frozen this way. The reason we are going to leave our adsol bag attached to the plasma is because when we go to further process this and to cryoprecipitate, we need a second bag to hold the rest of the plasma. The cryoprecipitate only is about uh, 15 to 20 milliliters of plasma. Uh, so our red blood cells, we are going to mix in that adsol to make sure it gets uh, thoroughly mixed in and we don't have any clumps, clumps of red blood cells left. We will do that with both of our bags. And once we have our bags mixed, they will get hung up on our tree. Red blood cells on the top. We'll crack our middle cannula here. And you can see our blood flowing down into the filter. It will go through here, fill up this back pouch, and then go down into our final, black, final bag. And we're gonna leave these overnight in our refrigerator to keep them at the proper four degrees Celsius. And tomorrow morning, our techs will get here. They will take these down and we will have our final blood bag. We'll be able to label it the day after that when we get our test results back and it'll be ready to go out to the hospitals. Uh, 
And the last thing we would do here is we are going to, in our computer, freeze our plasma. And then I will take it, put it in our freezer so it can freeze overnight. And then either it'll be processed further if it is our pre-cryo, or it will be labeled and ready to get to go out to our hospitals. I hope that that gives everyone a better understanding of everything that has to go into creating those life-saving blood products once they're donated from the generous donors. I will also touch on the fact that in a blood lab and or even in hospital labs, medical technologist jobs and uh, component technologist jobs are in really high demand right now. Um, a lot of the initial population that went into be being lab techs or med techs are now at the age of retiring. Um, and so if you're interested in laboratory science at all, or think about that it's something you may want to learn more about, um, we'd be happy to set up an opportunity for you to talk to folks further in our lab, but also you may want to consider that in your future field as well. Um, so at this time, I would like it to open it up to any questions or discussion um, items that you all have in relation to the video or to um, any of the things we've spoken about in regard to blood donation. So feel free to unmute yourself and ask or go ahead and type into the chat. Everyone's shy today, that's okay. Okay, I do want to, um, and you can always reach out to us with further questions or if you want some more information for your school. So at this point in time, I would like to introduce the concept uh, for our next webinar, which again, will be on December 9th at 2.30 p.m. We are extremely fortunate to have a published author, um, Pete Radigan, um, and actually his uh, heart, donor's mother who will be on our next webinar. So a little bit of the story of Pete and uh, From Tragedy to Triumph, the book. It's the story of Tom's heart. We are going to provide an up close personal look at the journey of two individuals facing death as they present their individual perspectives as being the donor family and the recipient. Um, so this, this heart transplant, Pete's heart transplant, actually took place just about 20 years ago. His donor heart came from someone in Niagara Falls. And so Pete as the heart recipient and the heart donor's mother actually wrote a book together, sharing their story from those two perspectives. So we are so thrilled in this webinar, we are going to have Pete on, Jan, who is the, mo the donor mom, um, and the publisher of the book, um, which was actually just released on October 4th. It is available on Amazon, and I'm actually working with Pete to get all of our partner schools um, a couple copies of the book in advance of the webinar. Uh, it's a short book, only 250 pages, um, so we encourage you all to go ahead and take a read beforehand. There, They also do have a website, Tragedy to Triumph, that um, you as a club or anyone who's interested can go and find out some more information. But this is really an incredible opportunity. Pete has since relocated to Florida. So we will have um, the publisher in New York, uh, Jan here in the falls and Pete in Florida on this call. 
to share their story, what they went through during the transplant, but also in writing the book together and the healing that took place. So this will be a great opportunity for you all to ask questions. And I encourage you beyond just the club, you know, feel free to invite um, any other students and or teachers who may be interested in this topic on December 9th. Any other comments or questions that anyone may have? Well, we thank you all for your participation, for attending today. For those that missed or students who are interested, this will be on our website as of tomorrow afternoon. Please feel free to reach out to us with any questions you might have. We do have a chat button right on our website that our team monitors, um, as well as you can always call us at 529-4270. Um, thank you for all of your help in saving lives and spreading awareness on our mission, educating the community, inspiring donation. Um, and saving lives. So thank you.